Hello and good morning and welcome to our online service. On, the, on the behalf of our senior pastor, Bishop Debiton Douglas, his wife, Paulette Douglas, and the entire ministerial team, we welcome you to our New Testament Church of God here in Hansworth, Birmingham, UK. We look forward to having you today. Please join us as we go into a time of worship. Above all powers. Above all powers. Above all kings. Above all nature. Above all nature. And all created things. Above all wisdom. Above all wisdom. And all the ways of man. You are here. Above all kingdom, above all kingdom, above all throne, above all throne, above all wonder, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth, above all wealth, and treasures of the earth. There's no way. There's no way.
I'd like you to join me in a time of prayer as we uh, seek God's blessing upon us today and upon the service. Please join with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence another time. We want to give you thanks for who you are, knowing that you are God, eternal, God everlasting, God beside whom there is none else. We come before you because you have allowed us access through your Son, Jesus, to approach your mercy seat, to come into your throne room of grace, wherein we find favor and blessings from you. We come today, Lord God, because it is the day that you have made and blessed upon us. We want to thank you for all your provision for us, Lord. Whatever our needs are, your word declares that you will supply all our needs according to the riches of your Son, Christ Jesus, in glory. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are our intercessor. You are at the right hand of the Father, uh, interceding on our behalf. So whatever circumstance or situation that we may be facing, whatever challenges we may have, and surely our world is full of challenges. If it's not the pandemic, it is other challenges. If it's not illness, it is some other challenges. If it's not the virus or disease or whatever it is, Lord God, bereavement, we are faced with many challenges. But we are assured of one thing, and that is your promise uh, to be uh, with us, your promise uh, to comfort us, your promise uh, to lead us through our valley of the shadow of death, our, your promise, Lord God Almighty, uh, to sustain us and to uh, provide for us. So we want to give you thanks at this time uh, for your strength and for your encouragement to our hearts that you are our strength. And without you, Lord, we have no strength, but we rely and depend upon you. Bless this service as we look to you and give thanks for all you have done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today's Bible reading is taken from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Cain and Abel. It reads thus. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wrought, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wrought, and why is thy countenance fallen? Verse 7. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. As together we say, Amen. Amen. We've reached a time in our service where we give unto the Lord our tithe and our offering. 
We'd like to thank our online givers as well as those who physically uh, present their offering unto the Lord. At this time, I want to reflect on uh, 90% of what God gives us is ours. The other 10% belongs to him. Give as the Lord bless you and may your store baskets continually be filled and running over. Join with me in a short prayer. Father, I thank you for givers. I thank you that you are the greatest giver that there has ever been. You gave your son who offered his life that we might have life in him. We want to thank you for blessing us uh, in all ways because all good things come from God above. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the provisions that you make for us. And out of a heart of gratitude, we come to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, because your blessings are continual. Your blessings are ever with us day by day, morning by morning. We are blessed by you. So may your favor continually be upon your people, whoever they may be, wherever they are. May they be blessed continually in your name. Amen. Amen.
And now we introduce our speaker today, our very own Bishop Deverton Douglas. Please enjoy. Thank you very much. What a pleasure it is to be addressing you again today. Wherever you are, I just want to say a personal welcome at this time. I'd just like to take a moment to speak with you today on the theme, putting God first is more than just obedience. Putting God first is more than obedience. Obedience is like a schoolmaster that brings us to faith. Just as the law was meant to lead us to faith, through obedience. Faith is different. Unlike obedience, it involves an external agent every step of the way. Obedience happens inside of you. It is an onboard decision you make to comply. Faith is what you do in a totally different realm. It is a stance. It is a disposition. Obedience often has ulterior motive. I'm going to do this because that is going to happen for me. But faith is, on the other hand, totally selfless. Obedience can vary from task to task, you can decide to obey on this occasion and not on the other. But faith is a constant. So in order to put God first, you must have faith. You must be exercising faith. You must put your total trust in God. When we put God first, it is not that we are saying we do not care what happens to us. It is simply a case where we are saying, whatever happened to me, it is going to be okay. Only then we can say, it is well. Not because we have a job or a good marriage or a wonderful family maybe a lovely home. You know, all these can change overnight. But when we lay hold on that which God has for us, that cannot change. Not in life, not in death. Praise God. We will only put God first based on our knowledge of Him and our relationship with Him. Everything is then left in the hand of God when we put him first. You know, in Daniel chapter 3, in verse 23 onwards, we see the three Hebrew boys being thrown into the fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar, the king at the time, heard that they would not bow to the images that he had created. So he called them in, he sent for them. And he said to them, I'm gonna give you one more chance. And you know, this was a private forum, if you like. When the music play, if you would just on this occasion, these were people who, young men who the king was fond of. They were his choice. If you would just bow down on this occasion, just, just, just a quick little worship, then we can just underline this thing and it's done and it's dusted. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said to him, or he said to them, but if you don't, which God is it that is going to save you? The boys said to him, you know, Okay, we don't even have to answer that, you know. Because the God that we serve, oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. 
The God that we put first, praise God, he will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, praise God, we still put him first. Oh, glory be to God. When you put God first, you don't, you don't, you don't prioritize your life. Bless the name of the Lord. It is important to notice, though, the order of things here. Because he did not say to them, worship the image outright, straight away. He said, when you hear the music. So let us be mindful about the part that music actually play in our worship life. You know, you could say, well, I listen to the music, but I don't dance to it. You could say, I, 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 I listen to the music, but I don't worship the devil. The music comes to get us into a mood. The music comes in order to, 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 to inform our behavior. The music comes as a prelude to worship. You can't change that. I can't change that. I would probably want to listen to some music that I would enjoy that is not of God, worldly music, music that take my mind a certain way because of the, 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 the way the music is or the lyric or the genre that I would enjoy, but in the process of listening, in the process of enjoying it, it is taking my mind somewhere. It is taking my soul into a space where I now bow down. And so music was used. And I just thought I would just stop for a moment to say, let us be careful of the music that we entertain in our spirit, because there is behind the music a spirit. And so you see, it was used in heaven, and the very same method was used by the Babylonian king to lure the people into worshiping idol. Let us be careful where that is concerned. But back to the Hebrew boys. They said, we will not worship even if our God does not deliver us from this physical danger. They were prepared to be martyred. Brethren, when we put God first, we are saying we are prepared to be martyrs. We will die. We will lose our lives for God, whatever it takes. St. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 21. Peter had just hit a high point in his spiritual life, so to speak, declaring that Jesus Christ was the son of the living God. Praise God. This was not a high point just because of what he said, but because of the source of the information. Peter was connected, man. He, 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 he just discerned that. God just dropped that in his spirit. But you know, all along at this time, Jesus knew Peter. From the time the guy surrendered his boat, you know, as a sinner man, that Jesus would get into it and be able to address the congregation that he was speaking to. Jesus knew that there was something about Peter, but Jesus also knew his temperament. Jesus also knew his character. Jesus also knew what he had to work with. You know, it's good to know people. It's good to understand that we are all a work in progress. So Peter went straight from the mountaintop to the valley. 
You see, Peter never did well when he comes on to physical or threat to physical life, even if it was for God's sake. <laughs> you know, but when you put God first, praise God, your life does not come into a prioritized place. Jesus said, if you, if you, if you try to save your life, you will actually lose it. But if you lose it for me, then you will gain it. So when Jesus' life was threatened, you know, Peter just drew his sword and chopped off the soldier's ear. When he felt threatened, when Peter felt threatened, he denied that he ever knew Jesus. But this matter of putting God first has to come before your personal life. It's not when it suits you. But let's talk a little bit. What do you do when you experience a threat? Let's not be too hard on Peter here. Your job is threatened. Your pride, this is a big one, is threatened. Your friendship circles are threatened. When a friend or loved one is ill-treated or threatened, what do you do in such a situation? Let's just think about it for a while. Because this is when self comes in. Great day on Sunday. Wow, what a message we heard. The praise theme, boy, they took us to another place. And how beautiful it was just walking out of church, feeling that you've been with the Lord and you have worshipped. What a blessed day. But then Monday comes. And all that was well is now about to disappear. And you think, if I just say, I think I know how I could get around this. It may be a lie, but it saves my job. It's not, it's not the truth, but at least my family will continue to be safe. The Hebrew boy said, we will not bow, even if it cost me my life. You see, this is where Jesus, in St. Matthew chapter 16, was slowly spelling out to his disciples what's going to happen in Jerusalem. So he didn't want to just drop it on them. So there was a buildup. When you read the scripture, he said, yeah, you know, going to take this long journey to uh, Jerusalem. And uh, yeah, they're going to hand me over to the chief priest there. They're going to treat me badly and, you know, insult me, say bad things about me. And, uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're going to kill me. But I'm going to raise again from the dead after three days. And you know, this is where Peter stepped in. See, Peter had assigned himself the role of chief protector of Jesus Christ. And you know, we have some of those in church. <laughs> uh, people who... You know, the rage of righteous indignation comes and this will never happen. How dare you? And, you know, but <laughs> so Peter was the protector of Jesus in this case. And so he, Jesus had just told them what the will of God was for his life. Peter took Jesus aside, you know, as you do, and uh <laughs> He said to Jesus, read my lips, <laughs> my words. This will never happen. Death 
No, sir. Not on my watch. You know, you can be so careful about protecting your own interest that you don't hear the whole story. Jesus said he was going to resur be resurrected in three days. I don't know that Peter even heard that. Praise God. Peter said, no, it's not going to happen. Be it far from you. Not on my watch. Brethren, let us be honest. It is a good feeling when you are under threat, when you are threatened or beaten upon and somebody step in and just take the whole thing over like a big brother in a school playground. What a lovely feeling that is. You just relax and just watch your big brother just fight it out. And you know, <laughs> it's probably a good time to mention that Jesus himself at this point in time was also struggling with the whole idea. So here is something that has come upon you, something that you're worried about, you feel threatened, you don't want to do it anyway, but you know it's God's will. And somebody step in and say, no, sir, this isn't right. We cannot allow this to happen. And you feel, wow, that's what I've been waiting for. But Jesus did not see it that way. He knew it was the will of the Father and he had put God first. <laughs> Peter told him clearly, it's not going to happen. But Jesus, and Peter was just about to say, I think, to tell Jesus, just leave it to me. Just leave it to me. But Jesus stopped him right there and laid down what we now know as the put God first mantra. If any man will come after me, let him first deny himself. What is self-denial anyway? Set aside your personal life. <laughs> oh, that's a big one. Oh, I don't know. Reprioritize your interests, your possession, your family, all that is in your circle, all that is about you, reprioritize it. Deny yourself a place in the first Adam in order to gain a place in the last Adam. Secondly, Jesus said, take up your cross. Or in some cases, crosses. Take up your cross and follow me. But secondly, yes, take up your cross. It means to embrace the journey, whatever it brings your way. The, the, the path that God has commanded for you, embrace it. The scars, brethren, will serve a purpose. Praise God. You know, I've had what I would could call a rough time in my 38 years, 31 years even, of ministry. There are bits of it that has not been so pleasant. And uh, I would want to forget it because the memory of it sometimes hurts. Never mind the actual going through it. And sometimes people say, Pastor, why do you, I mean, why do you put up with it? And I, you know, brethren, I only have one answer. Because I have put God first. I have denied the life that I had set out to achieve and put God first. You know, it was my intention to retire. At 45, 50 was my limit. I was on course. I didn't have a problem. Until God said in 1999, the exact phrase I kept hearing, separate yourself unto me. 
separate yourself unto me. I did not know what that meant, but I started to pray about it. And I felt the Lord was saying, I need to be more dedicated. That too. I felt he was saying, I really need to put more time in building my relationship with him. That too. Eventually the Lord spelt it out. I want you to give up your job and take ministry full time. <laughs> oh, brother. How do you think that must have felt? I had a job in 1999 that paid the sort of salary that is today referred to as an excellent salary today. That was 1999. I had a list of things that I wanted to acquire, achieve by a certain time. And all of this was about to go down the chute. I wanted some help from my wife. So, you know, I, I, I told her what the Lord said. And I was expecting her to say, you must be joking. What are you talking? She just shrugged her shoulder. And if that's what the Lord said. And I'm thinking, did you hear me? We've got three children. <laughs> oh my God. And did I go through it? But the scars tell a story. Praise God. I remember the telephone being cut off and somebody hearing about it and laughed. Oh my God. I remember the bailiff at the door. I remember the, the, the gas man coming to cut off the gas. And I think it must have been Daniel who crept out of the, 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 the front room because somebody was at the door and, 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 and made some little baby sound and, and then opened the door as it was ajar. And the man looked in the baby's eyes and said, oh, Mr. Douglas, you've got a young baby. I can't, I can't, I can't turn off the gas. But the journey, oh, praise God. I look back at it now and I thank God because it told me that God was able to keep me and to carry me unto from that place unto where I am now and to where I'm going. You see, brethren, I said earlier, it's not because we don't care about what happened, but because we know it is going to be okay. It is going to be okay. And I probably need to tell you at this time that when you put God first, you may have to change your job. Praise God. You may have to change the line of business that you are in, but it is going to be okay. Praise be to God. It is going to be okay when you put God first. The boys were in the furnace and the Bible said they did not get burned. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. If I tell you what I've been through to get to where I am at this time, you would not believe me because how could it be? But blessed be God. He is able to keep that which he have committed against that day, against that day. I will come through as pure gold. You will come through as pure gold when you put God first. The last thing Jesus said, follow me. Just stop. Think and listen what God has to say. In St. John chapter 5 and 19, the Lord said, It is what I see the Father do that I do. Let us follow Jesus. You know, when the Lord said in verse uh, 21, if any man will come after me, the term you used in the Greek after, the term used there is, 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 is a term that gives you a picture of somebody coming through a door. 
and then somebody else come through afterwards. So Jesus is saying, if you will come through like I have come through, you must first put God first, deny yourself, put God first, take up your cross, put God first, follow me, put God first, live like I lived, put God first, praise God. Some of us think because we are saved, we should not suffer. But we see somebody like Job. God made a boast on him, his righteousness, his uprightness. But he suffered and waited upon God. St. John chapter 10 and verse 10 is one of the scriptures that make us feel that we should never suffer. Because Jesus said, I've come that you would have life and have it more abundantly. We also think of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 13, where the Bible tells us that we are the head and not the tail. You know, we regularly uh, use terms like we are above and not beneath. But Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 16, it tells us of the metamorphosis process, the transformational process that we go through from one glory to another on a daily basis. He would have us to know that this change is a process. Brethren, you know it's a dangerous journey from caterpillar to butterfly. That thing in your garden is threatened every day. You put slug pellets down. You try to kill it because it's dangerous. It's destroying your vegetation. Some suffering and waiting has to take place for us to get through this process. Let me take you to a story. In the, the scripture that was read this morning is where I want to finish. In the next few minutes, the Bible said in verse 3 of Genesis chapter 4, And in the process of time it came to pass, that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to the Lord. He brought of the fruit of the ground. There was nothing special about what he brought. It was just from his field. He walked up to the altar and he gave his offering. He just gave something. We'll come back to Cain, to Cain in a moment. In verse 4, the Bible said that Abel also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof unto the Lord. And the Lord had respect unto his offering. Cain brought a gift. Abel brought a gift. His gift is described just as Cain's gift offering has been described. We are told he brought the firstlings of his flock. Now, here the writer is slightly giving us some more detail because there is more to say about how Abel did his business. He put God first. You see the firstlings here is the word first fruit. It's the doctrine of first fruit being introduced in scripture. The, word, the Hebrew word for first fruit in scripture is the word we know as head in the English. But more so, it's talking about the shaking of the head. In the Middle East, in some culture, people in authority is called the shake. Okay, it's the same word, shake. It refers to the person who shakes the head or gives you the nod. It's talking about favor. Praise God. So the first fruit is for the one that gives the favor. It's for the one that shakes the head. So 
Abel did not, according to scripture, just pick up any kid or lamb and brought to the Lord. He took the firstling, the first born and the Bible didn't just stop there. It says of the firstborn, he took the fatted, the choicest, the most pristine. You know, brethren, your employer cannot pay you enough for you to have abundant life. You need a head shake. Oh, praise God. You need a head shake. Your employer cannot promote you enough for you to have abundant life. You need a head shake. Praise God. So Abel understood that a part of his flock, the firstling, was belonging to the one who gave the head shake. And so he brought it to the Lord. Putting God first requires sacrifice. It was the best that he, sell, he, sell, he gave to the Lord. Self-sacrifice. You know, you would have heard it preached that the reason why God did not accept uh, Cain's offering is because he did not bring a blood sacrifice. And Mm, the, I would not want to mess with your theology at this time, but what I would say, there is more in the picture that we can actually look at. Both men are farmers. Each brought from their produce, one from the vegetation and the other from their livestock. Cain brought fruit of his fruit. You know, <laughs> praise God. But Abel did not just bring from his stock, but the firstling. Abel's offering is from a select part of his produce. And among that selection, he further made the selection of getting the best for God. Abel in selection was honoring God with the best of his lot. He wanted to let God be first in his life. What is so peculiar about the select portion? Let's look at the word in scripture. In, in, in um, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 20, Paul tells us, but now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. Now, this is the New Testament offering of the same term. You know, Christ is referred to here as the first fruit. But what does that mean? In the Greek, it's the word apake, which is two word, apo and arche. Apo means away from, out of, separate. Ake means head, chief, principal, first in rank, political power to rule over. How are we supposed to treat the first fruit? You know, Jesus Christ in uh, St. John chapter uh, 20 when he rose from the dead, that blessed Sunday morning, when uh, Mary saw him and asked him whether he was the gardener, Jesus called her name. He said, Mary. And Mary said, Rabboni. You know, Jesus said, don't touch me, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go tell my brethren that I say unto them, I am ascended to my father and their father and my God and their God. When Mary said to Jesus, Rabboni, Mary was saying to Jesus, Master, yes, but not because he was the teacher. 
He was saying, Master, because he recognized him. Rabboni, it's an unveiling term. To say, I now know who you are, sir. To say, I've recognized you, sir. See, Mary did not use the, 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 the language of the day. She used a, a, a familiar dialect, a different language to Jesus. She spoke in Syriac. In fact, it's only two times that that word is used in, 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 in scripture. Blind Bartimaeus was the other person to use it. And Jesus felt his, his, his approach was so familiar that he said to him, you've got what you want. Just name what you want and it's done. Praise God. Be it unto you. Oh, praise God. According to your request. But Jesus said to, Jesus said to Mary, do not touch me. And this is where I'll finish. But the word that Jesus used when he said, do not touch me, the word apple, it's not a touch, brethren. It's a cling. It, it means to fasten to. Mary was not about to touch Jesus. He, she was about to grab him and embrace him and squeeze him. Oh, it's you. I recognize you. Jesus said, don't cling to me because he was the first fruit. Don't hold on to the first fruit. Don't be a familiar with the first fruit. You see, the first fruit is separate. Oh, praise God. The first fruit is head. It is chief. He said, don't hold on to me because I'm not, I've not yet ascended to my father. The first fruit must be given to God first. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And your first fruit in putting God first when it comes unto our offering, when it comes unto waking up in the morning, your first First is praying to the Lord. Your first is thanking him. When you get into work, your first is asking God to help you to serve him through this job today. When it comes to your pay, your first is your tithe. Praise God. The Bible said it is separate. Don't cling to it. It is separate. Don't hold on to it until it is offered to the Lord. Do not hold on to it. Oh, praise God. I want to say to you today, brethren, let us put God first. Let us give to the Lord what belongs to him. Oh, praise God. If you have listened today to this broadcast and you are thinking, yes, I like this word. Or maybe you don't like this word because it's so difficult to put God first. I'm going to ask you, consider allowing God to take you through this process that Paul talked about when he spoke about being transformed from glory to glory. The caterpillar has to go into a pupa before it becomes the butterfly. But it's okay. Because you put God first, you are going to be changed into that transformed person from glory to glory. Brethren, let us put God first. Hansworth need to put God first. When God is first, praise God, there is no telling what our church will achieve. And I feel that our church is right now on the brink of something. The enemy may want to stop it, but when we put God first, nothing, nothing can stop it. I challenge you today, put God first and see what the Lord will do in your life. I want to pray with you. Praise God, wherever you are watching from today, you may hear this broadcast even at a later date. It is you that I am talking to. The Lord would allow you to hear it because he wants you to put him first. So I'm going to ask you just to bow your heads with me right where you are. If you do not know the Lord as your Savior, you are a Peter. Christ 
has mocked you. Oh, praise God. You may have denied him, but he has mocked you. He sent a message after his resurrection. He said, tell Peter to, because I want him to be a part of the number. God know who you are, and he wants to bring you home. Bow your heads with me. Almighty, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to speak to your people again. I ask of you, Lord God, as your children pledge today to put you first, that you will make it possible, that you will speak to lions today and lock jaws of lions today, that they cannot harm your children. That, Father, you will shroud your children today as they go into the fiery furnace, though turned up even hotter, dear Lord Jesus, so that the heat will not harm them. Decisions are being made, dear Father, for you, dear God, as against, dear Lord God, the world. Master, luck is not in our favor. But Lord Jesus, you are the God, the head that shakes. I ask you today for favor. Somebody need a head shake today because they have put you first. Somebody, Lord Jesus, is in the lion's den because you have been put first. God, we ask you, shake your head for somebody today. Be the shake, oh Lord God, for somebody today, I pray. Lord, in your name right now, Father, we call sinners to repentance. And as they confess their sins before you now, Lord God, as the sinner's prayer has been said, I pray, Lord God, that you will hear their confession, that you will forgive and save their souls, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have made a recommitment today to God, I commend you. Praise the Lord. If you have given your heart to the Lord today, I commend you. I would just like to connect with you. I would ask you just to take a moment and dial the number on the screen at this time. Leave a message for me and I promise I will get back to you. I will have a conversation with you. If you've just recommit, then I will celebrate with you. If you are just making your first steps, I will hold your hand and help you to make those first steps. God bless you and take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye. We'd like to thank our Bishop David and Douglas for that wonderful word of encouragement. We thank the Lord for his goodness, his mercy, and his care. God is still our protector, our provider, and we thank him for that. Will you join with me in prayer? So Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Your words come to strengthen us and to encourage our hearts, O oh God. The challenges that we may face, the situation and circumstances that confront us, we know by your strength and your help that we can overcome. It is not by our own strength, might, or intelligence, but it is by your Spirit. Your Spirit guides us, and we echo the words of David, that you lead us into your path of righteousness for your name's sake. So we give honour, we give glory, we give praise to you, Lord, for all that you are. Everlasting God, mighty God, you are mighty to save, you are mighty to deliver, you are mighty to heal. So heal our hearts, our minds, O oh God, heal our land, and let there be prosperity in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Notices for Sunday the 16th of May 2021. The Association of Jamaican Nationals, in collaboration with the Office of the West Midlands Lieutenancy, 
and the New Testament Church of God Handsworth will be hosting a Zoom masterclass on nominating a person for an honour. This will be held on Wednesday the 19th of May 2021 at 7pm to 8.30pm. Zoom details 958-6623-3859 passcode 237215. Please see the flyer for more details. If you would like to become a member of the New Testament Church of God Handsworth, please speak to Reverend Lloyd Esty or ring the church office on 0121 554 1358. Leave your name and contact number and someone will get back to you. Please save the date and join us for our virtual national convention. 23rd to the 25th of July 2021 on YouTube and online. The theme for this year is Fearless Living in a Time of Great Uncertainty and with all the restrictions that have been placed upon us. There will be several distinguished speakers, including our very own Bishop Donald Bolt. On the Saturday, we will have impactful contributions from the men, youth and women's department as they share from their perspectives. Please see the flyers to be displayed. Until further notice, the church office will be open on a Monday and you can contact the church administrator between 9am and 3pm. Outside of these hours, you can still contact the office on 0121 554 1358 or via email at ntcghandsworth at gmail.com and someone will get back to you. Stay safe, stay connected, and stay blessed. We thank Bishop Deverton Douglas for those wonderful words of encouragement. So, like, subscribe, share. Don't forget to ring that bell. Ding, 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 ding.